Hello and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to day five of Truth and Reconciliation Week. Um, and I have been so grateful and excited to be a part of these sessions all throughout the week. Um, and I'm so excited to introduce you to, to two guest speakers today. Uh, but first, let me introduce myself. My name is Dan Gibson, and I am a manager of the Royal Bank on-campus location uh, outside of the Wilfrid Laurier University branch. Um, a little bit about what I do is I support students and youth um, across the country virtually and at the university on uh, learning about financial literacy and supporting them with conversations around budgeting, banking, uh, and everything in between, between investments and credit cards. Um, today we have with us Maya Hoskins Fiddler, who is nine years old and here to talk about truth and reconciliation and why it is so important um, along with her lifelong friend, Shirley uh, Ispister, who is the president of the Central Urban Métis Federation Incorporated and founder of Cultural Métis Days. Thank you both for being here. I'm looking forward to this presentation and over to you. Hi, my name is Maya Elena Rose Hoskins Fuller. Both my mom and my dad have Métis roots. I'm nine years old and here to talk about truth and reconciliation and why it is important. I'm in fourth grade French immersion online. I had the same teacher as last year, Monsieur Fontaine. He is a wonderful teacher because he understands the relations of truth and reconciliation. Sometimes in school, French immersion, he helps me. With me learn the chef or Cree words. Residential schools took away children's words and culture. But today we learned that it was wrong to take away children's culture. I am Métis and sang the Métis National Anthem in front of lots of people. It made me feel nervous at first, but after it made me feel proud. My question is that if I was a parent or if you were a parent and your kids got taken to residential schools, and they didn't come back. How do you feel? This year, I learned that five of my ancestors went to Maryville Residential School. At the site houses, they found mass graves of children like in Canada. During the summer with COVID, I did a lot of harvesting for Orchard Day. I delivered a big bag of sage packed full that was as big as me that I harvested over the summer to comfy to help the support of living homes and because they organized Métis Cultural Day. Over to you, Shirley. Good morning, everyone. Maya, you're such a wonderful girl, and that is a hard bio to follow. My name is Shirley Eisbister, and I'm the president of Central Urban Métis Federation, Inc., commonly known as Comfy. Our role in the community is to I uh, help provide a better quality of life for uh, Indigenous people, but also to work uh, in diversity, because diversity is what's going to keep our, our communities uh, safe and strong. So today, I'm pleased to be here to talk with Maya about uh, truth and reconciliation, about Métis cultural days, and how that impacts uh, our community as a whole. I wanted to ask you, about how the work in reconciliation helped Métis Cultural Days come to be. Why is it important to have started Métis Cultural Days? Well, four years ago, uh, we started Métis Cultural Days. And the reason that we did that is because we wanted uh, the Métis culture to be showcased, our language, our history. We, we wanted students to be able to participate and, and learn our culture. I really believe that as we learn each other's cultures, it helps to, uh, to stop or prevent racism. Because once we get to know each other, we realize that we're all the same. So Métis Cultural Days became a, a, a way of knowing. So we started it, we, um, it, it had such a huge impact on the community. We are now uh, just finished having year four of Métis Cultural Days. And, you know, on the Friday, we had over a thousand students each year come out and participate uh, in all the events, be that um, uh, Bannock on a stick making, uh, mischief language, fiddle playing. There was so many events, uh, Voyager games, 
like there was just so many events for the students to participate in. Uh, Mitchup bingo, learning uh, certain words. So it was important to us to be able to showcase our Métis culture and history and, uh, and know that, you know, we have a distinct identity. Thank you, Maya. Métis Cultural Day's theme this year was the celebration of the elders and celebrated my Uncle Mel Vandale, who received a Lifetime Achievement Award accepted by family since he passed away. It made me feel sad because when I grew up, I was kind of thinking that he would teach me. I took the time to go see him in the hospital brought, and brought family that flew in to visit. We would bring our guitar and play before COVID. I remember when he came to my last school concert before COVID at Broadway Theater and said when he went to school, they never got to speak much yet. And my concert was in the Michigan language. He also said there was a year he couldn't even go to school because they had to work on the farm one year when their dad went to go fight in the war and their mom had traded working on the farm to stay in Burner on the property. This year, it was the first time Métis Cultural Days were turned into in-person, but still had a lot of safety rules of COVID. This year, everyone had to wear a mask. There were sanitizers, the food was family style. That means that you don't go, go to get your food. It is brought to your family. There, is, there was less activity and the people demonstrating our culture. There was lots of outdoor activity, testing, and vaccines people could get. I'm autoimmune, so I appreciated safety with COVID. What, what is Métis identity? Why is it important to have theme for each Métis culture? Thank you, Maya. Yes, May two days this year was the year of the elder. And uh, the reason for that is that each year we wanted to showcase uh, different uh, groups so that they had the opportunity to just be able to showcase their talent and transfer their knowledge uh, in their, their own way. And elders are really, really important in the Métis culture. We honor them, we listen to them, and we, they pass down the knowledge to us. And a perfect example of that is Maya, who has uh, been involved in Métis activities since she was born. And you know what, Maya? Your Uncle Mel uh, was a huge part of my life too. And I knew him from the time that uh, I was a very young girl. And that was a long, long, long time ago. So he, uh, he was important in, my, in all of my family's life. The, the Métis have a distinct identity and way of life. It, Métis is a French word meaning mixed, mostly French and First Nation bloodlines. When I look at myself and from the ancestry DNA that I completed, my DNA came up that I'm 47% First Nation and 53% French. So that's a you know, a fairly equal mixture of the bloodlines. And so, uh, you know, my Métis identity comes from both sides of my family were born at Round Prairie Métis Settlement. That's about 30 kilometers from Saskatoon. And my dad was born there and both sides of my family homesteaded there uh, and received script and then moved back into Saskatoon in uh, 1936. So, uh, that is a place that I go to uh, feel good again, where um, I go to reflect and think. And, you know, there is uh, a cemetery there, and I have lots of family that were originally uh, buried there. So it's a place to just go and reflect and feel good about who we are as people and how we can transfer that knowledge on so that children in all the schools will know who the Métis people are. Thank you. The year 2020.
Métis Cultural Days was online, bringing Métis cooking, music, humor, laughing, and jigging into our into the homes of people across the homeland. For as long as Métis people have been, we have been adapting. We protect what we what we like and leave what we don't like. That year was a lot of things that I missed about me. Change I missed a bit about VT culture days. Change because of COVID. It was a good thing I learned about medicine keys the year before because now we have COVID. My question is that who is who can participate in Metis Cultural Days? And what events, speakers, music, and activities can we place during Metis Cultural Days? We hope that uh, everyone will participate in Metis Cultural Days. Uh, Metis Cultural Days is for uh, to showcase diversity in the city of Saskatoon, to welcome people of all cultures, uh, to be able to come and learn about the Métis people. And we do that in various ways. Like um, two years ago, we uh, showcased the year of the, the woman. And so we had actors portraying different uh, women in history, Métis women in history. And each group of kids had the opportunity to go and, and listen to her life story and ask questions. We had someone portraying Louis Riel, and uh, he even carried a ball and chain, and he talked about the story of, of Riel. You know, Gabriel Dumont, strong people, but we wanted to showcase women because there have been so many strong Métis women in our history, but yet they haven't been recognized for all that they did. And the Métis women were the strength of our communities you know, when we uh, all lived like at Round Prairie. So, those are um, things that we wanted to be sure that people learned. But there was also so many fun things, like all of the entertainment, the fiddle players, the, the jigging, the uh, uh, neck bone eating competition, things like that. There was just so much fun to be had. And, you know, people were dancing all over. It was just so good. And, and the thing about Métis Cultural Days, it's a family event. So it's an alcohol and drug-free event. And every uh, time we have this, once a year on the Friday night is a family dance. And we just invite everyone to come out and participate and just enjoy themselves and get to know who we really are. Thank you. 2019 Media Cultural Day themes this year was a celebration of Métis women. I performed as a historical actor, Marcia Barton, a Métis girl from Batash who died early on, having been shot in the crossfires during the Métis resistance. This was the year I performed the Métis national anthem at Back to Batash Days and Métis Cultural Days. Métis Cultural Days was the first gig I got to go on. <laughs> I got my first check in my name. I opened my first bank account. I was seven. This year, I learned that I started hunting in the bush. I learned how to trap rabbits in a snare, nets for ice fishing overnight, and I picked teeth. My question this time is, why is it important for you or young people to be involved. What message do you have for us young people? Well, Maya, I've always been so proud and supportive of the way that you give back to our community. And yes, you did the Métis National Anthem. And uh, when I hear that anthem, I get goosebumps because that brings all of my history and culture into play. And I'm always so impressed with everything that you do uh, and with both sides of your family being so involved in our Métis culture, it's just giving you this opportunity to thrive. And that's what we want. I mean, it's important for young people of all cultures uh, to be involved in uh, cultural events. 
It's our way of transferring knowledge. And it's a way to reduce racism as we learn about people's languages and ceremonies. Student success for all culture is what we work towards because we really feel strongly that it just can't be about one culture. It needs to be about diversity and all of us coming together. And each student needs to be proud of who they are. Uh, you know, I always tell students, learn your language. If you have a language, never be embarrassed to use it. I do not have my Michif language. My parents both spoke Michif, but only to e each other and only if they didn't want us to hear what they were saying. Other than that, we did not get language. And it's, uh, I'm very sad for that. And I admire the students who are learning the Michif language and and that's what we want. We want a, a revitalization of the Michif language. And there's so much work across Canada going on so that people can do that, so that our, our grandchildren and those to come, you know, will be able to learn uh, Michif and be fluent in it. We're partners in Saskatoon with both school boards, the Catholic school board and the public school board. St. Michael's School is a Métis, School Excellence of Learning and the uh, Westmont School uh, is also uh, our Métis school. And so language is being taught from kindergarten, you know, up to grade four now. So as children progress, they're going to be learning that Michif language. And it's amazing to me when I see um, children of other cultures and they're speaking Michif and you know, I'm learning the odd word, but I'm, I'm can't ever see myself being fluent in it. So children that have language, it is really important that you carry on that language and never be afraid to use it, you know, because you, it'll, when you're older, you're definitely uh, going to want to be able to have it. So thank you. 2018, I performed as a historical actor in the story of Monsieur Garton. A Métis girl who died early on having been shot. This having been shot in the crossfire during the Métis resistance. This year was the first annual Métis 2018 provinces. The three day cultural days in combination with reconciliation in education immersion. Field trips at the museum with knowledge keepers, market awareness, and recognized Métis role models with awards and recognition and concluding an indigenous art institution to support comfy initiatives. Each year at Métis Cultural Day, we honor uh, outstanding Métis contributions in, throughout uh, Canada if people nominate them. And yes, that's been one of the best events that, that we hold because then we get to show who these people are and what they've done to contribute to our community. And uh, Maya, you've been one of the people who uh, have contributed to every facet of our Métis culture. In your, in your nine years. My favorite part of all the year events of making cultural days was probably the two years that I got to play Marcia Breton. I love acting and I love doing things that include acting, which is jigging, singing the anthems. I love to do anything at Métis Cultural Days, but those were probably my two favorite things. Yeah, there are so many favorite parts of Métis Cultural Days. And, and for me, the favorite part for me is the, the children from uh, St. Michael's School, their fiddle program coming and uh, playing the fiddle. And Westmount School, their dancers coming and, uh, and jigging for for everyone to see and that for me it, because that tells me that we have all of these young people who are learning our Métis culture 
and then are going to be able to pass it on and bring other people into their, their realm. Thank you. Why is culture important to reconciliation? You know, Maya, that's, that's an interesting question and sometimes can, can be very hard to answer. Um, reconciliation. Um, you know, Comfy's participated in reconciliation since 2012 when we had the national event in Saskatoon. This, this becomes a, a hard time to answer those type of questions because of everything that's been happening. We need truth before reconciliation. And, you know, in many places, you know, the truth is starting to come out. And, you know, everyone's been hearing about the, uh, the finding of the children in the unmarked graves. It's a sad time in uh, Canadian history. And it's a very sad time for Indigenous people and people that have family connected to residential school. Reconciliation uh, for me is, you know, it's finding a way to be able to honor that truth and to be able to move forward, not forgetting what happened in the past, but being able to mix the, the two together so that we, we recognize and honor the past and then we find a way to move forward in uh, reconciliation. It's a long process and, it, and it's a hurtful process. So Métis Days uh, is part of that process. It's getting people to understand our cultures and what happened because Métis people were in residential school also. You know, Métis people are part of the Michigan Murdered Indigenous Women. So we have all of these things that are part of our lives and so we need to showcase our culture and where we come from. And we need to try and reconcile that way. Thank you. Well, I mean, reconciliation is an important thing because mass graves were found in, I can't remember. But it was said for a lot of people, which is very true. It was even said for me and my mom, even though we do know that a lot of my ancestors went to residential school. And reconciliation is very important thing about, like I'm learning in school right now, about one trip and reconciliation. Why it is so important. And relationships of reconciliation. It's like relationship building. I didn't fully hear the question, Maya, but I but I heard you mention Orange Shirt Day, and Orange Shirt Day is uh, is a day we set we we honor. We don't celebrate it. We honor uh, survivors on Orange Shirt Day, and yesterday was the. Uh, the first ever National Truth and Reconciliation Day. And so we, uh, Comfy hosts uh, a huge pancake breakfast open to everyone. And, uh, and we give orange shirts to people who don't have them so that, and we give information out so that they know why we're, we're honoring the survivors and uh, the history of what happened. And, it's been a hard year since the, uh, the unmarked graves in Kamloops were found. And now with Kawasis and, and uh, other First Nations uh, schools. So it, it's been a hard year for everyone. And we have been trying to, uh, to put the word out there that the, to be able to get people to think about what's happened. Um, my mother-in-law was in residential school for 13 years in Bertle, Manitoba. So my husband is a descendant of that and our children 
and our grandchildren and those to come will all be descendants of the residential school. So it's, uh, it's hard uh, hearing about uh, the unmarked graves and knowing that there are going to be many, many more that, that will be found. And I'm glad the children are coming home. Thank you. I think being on the alley to reconciliation is when we become role models for an active, ongoing participation. What do you think? I think you're absolutely right, little girl. I think that you, for one, are a role model. And a great example of uh, how things will change because we are all in a point of, of learning. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can still learn from people. And then you wanna pass that down. And it's why transfer of knowledge is so important and that our young people and the children right from birth need to honor who they are. That just isn't uh, for the um, Métis culture. That's for every culture. You always have to honor who you are and be proud of it. Thank you. Not just one day, every, every day, to be proud of ourselves and each other. Thank you to all my elders for every example. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Maya, I didn't hear your question. It wasn't a question. Oh. How do you feel about today? How do I feel about what? About today. Today? I think today is great. Um, each day when I wake up, I give thanks for that day. I give thanks to uh, my ancestors. I give thanks for my family. And I honor uh, survivors. Um, I'm very seldom seen without an orange shirt on because I want to recognize what the trauma of, uh, of our families and that, you know, we still have so far to go. You know, we hang an orange shirt on the rail at our home and we've done that since uh, the first 215 unmarked graves were found. And it's um, trying to, to talk to people how, how hurtful that is. You know, it's so many Canadians, you know, couldn't believe that this happened. But Indigenous people have been saying for many, many years that they know that it was there. And it took um, what it was found at Kamloops to awaken everyone. And I think for me, I look at that as the children were showing us it's time for them to go home. And so we're going to be uh, feeling the effects of this, I think, for many years. Thank you. As students and kids, what are, what do we need to remember tomorrow to make sure we make time for learning from our elders? I think that you have to have the opportunity. So I think your, you know, your moms or your dads, or you know, if you're being raised by you, your your uh, grandparents, I think you need the opportunity, and you need to want to listen to those stories. I remember tons of stories that were told uh, told to us when I was young, and we would be sitting around on the floor, and you know, my grandfather would be talking. And we were wanting to go outside. And so we weren't very intent on listening. 
So we need to take time to listen to those stories and to learn from them because you might just learn maybe one thing, but you'll remember that. And I do remember lots of, of the stories, but I one wish is that I would have listened intently because they were gone before I could realize that I needed to hear those stories and write them down. So I think it's, it's uh, we need to take the opportunity. Teachers need to give children in schools the opportunity to learn from, uh, from the elders. And stories need to be told because the indigenous people, that's how we passed information down. And we still do to this day is by storytelling. Um, we have some of the greatest storytellers and we showcased the elders uh, storytelling this year at the Year of the Elder at Métis Cultural Days because we know it's important for the children to listen. And they had tons of questions to the elders. So for me, that's one way that we can do that. Thanks. I remember that. Thank you for being here today. And thank you, Ms. Maya. I was really pleased to be a part of this conversation today, especially with you. I so admire you and everything that you do in the community and, and how such a happy, friendly girl you are. And you make my heart thump when you sing the Métis National Anthem. So thank you very much. I admire you too. Thank you. Thank you so much to both of you. And before I continue, I just want to make sure um, there's no other questions from Maya to you, Shirley. We're all good? Yes, I think we're good. Awesome. I have to be honest. Um, this was my first real experience in learning more about Métis culture uh, specifically. Um, and I absolutely love the entire focus around culture and the fun. And I want to get into this neck bone eating competition because I think I do pretty good. <laughs> um, we'll make sure you're invited for next year. <laughs> that's right. Uh, we don't have any questions as of yet in the Q&A section, but there's a lot that I'd like to pull on. Um, but first, maybe Shirley, I'll pass it to you. I just want to ask... Um, Obviously, for those that aren't Indigenous, we talk about allyship and the importance of allyship. Um, and I'm just wondering, maybe from your perspective, uh, you know, as somebody like myself, an outsider looking in, what is the best way that we can continue to be allies to Indigenous people, Indigenous communities, um, and uh, if we want to get more specific, uh, Métis uh, communities as well? Well, I think that uh, allies is... Uh is not the word that, that I would use. I think that we all need to uh, um, come together and learn together and be able to ask questions. I always tell uh, people, never be afraid to ask questions. If you're not sure of whether you're supposed to wear um, a skirt to a cultural event or you're not sure if, uh, you know, if you're going to smudge, don't ever be afraid to ask. And that's, the, I think one of the biggest things we come across is that when non-Indigenous people attend events, they, they're not sure what to do, but they're also afraid to ask. And, and I think that we don't learn unless we're taught so or able to ask questions. So I think that that's, that's really important. And it's getting to know people by... I always tell people, you know, we, when you sit at a table and it doesn't matter what culture you're from, but you're just talking and visiting, all of that goes out the window. It, it doesn't matter if it's an Indigenous person or if a person is, is from Japan or China. Once you get talking, all of that is out the door because then you're, you're, you're getting to know each other as people. And that's what's important to me. I love that. It's like the art of networking um, and actually getting a little uncomfortable being uncomfortable where you're like, 
you know, I, I sometimes, you know, have a doubt if I should ask a question or not, because the last thing I want to do is offend somebody. But I think it's super important to, you know, have that level of uncomfortability so that you can actually have some sort of growth and it will be uncomfortable for sure. Um, Maya, I actually have a question for you um, because Shirley speaks so highly of you and that you contribute to every aspect of Métis culture. Uh, I would love to know about what your plans are and what you continue to do to be an advocate for those in the Métis communities. And uh, hopefully I, uh, I don't mix you up with extending the question, uh, and how are you encouraging your friends uh, and those around you to, to celebrate that culture? I try to spread Métis culture around as much as I can. I encourage my friends to jig. Like, I know my friend Natalie, she started jigging after I told her about it in a jigging competition at Métis Days one year. And I just, I try to pass it around as much as I can because I like spreading the joy and that just makes me feel happy. I love that. That's awesome. I want to see the jig one day because I don't know anything about it. It sounds like it would be a lot of fun, especially since you like jigging, singing, singing the anthems and acting. Uh, so I feel like there might be a bright future for you with all of the uh, those those things coming together somehow. Um, Shirley, I have a question for you around the, uh, I guess, the different years that go on through uh, Métis culture. So to th this year was the year of the elder, you said? Yes, it was. The first, awesome. And the year oh, last, go ahead. sorry, yeah, this year was the year of the elder. And we wanted to showcase that because we've had the year of the youth last year, the year of the women, and uh, the upcoming the next year. Uh, September 8th to the 11th is going to be the year of the family. So we wanted to go through all of the age groups and and grouping and give people the opportunity, you know, to come out and uh, showcase their talents and uh, and it. also to be able to uh, to teach. Like the year of the youth, we were online, of course, but uh, you know we had young people, you know, rapping and everything and yeah like it was it was it was really good and uh and you know fiddles are playing and youth are rapping and yeah it was just such a fun event and if you go on to, uh line to metis cultural days uh you can learn to jig on there because there's uh teachings on there for metis cultural days of jigging and some fiddle playing and yeah so and it's going to be there so people can learn from it I am all for it. I love hitting a dance floor. And if I am ever at an event, then I can definitely bust out a jig. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so that, that actually builds off my question, though, with the year of the elder, and then I guess with a year of the family and talking about the strengths of women in the Métis community, um, I'm just wondering, how is the year selection process um, done? How did you, how, I guess, how do we define which year is which? And then also, with the strength, with women being the strengths of the communities and seeing how the world is kind of unfolding right now with more focus on women empowerment, how are we bringing that to life within the Métis communities as well? Well, there's many Métis women involved on uh, different committees and boards, and it's being able to get that strength and, and voice out into the community. And it's, uh, and I'm finding that there's many more women involved in from every culture, not just from uh, the, the Métis or Indigenous community. We uh, basically, the committee uh, went through and we choose which year is going to be the next year. And we really wanted to focus on the strength of the family for next year. So events and entertainment and speakers will all be focused uh, towards that. And then of course, we'll be creating uh, fun events for families to participate in. So that's uh, that's how that was chosen. And, you know, when we look at, uh, go back and, and look at our ancestors and the strength uh, that Métis women have. Uh, and, you know, we weren't born into that strength. We had to um, come into it on our own and, um, 
my strength uh, came probably about 37, 38 years ago. And that was when finally uh, I had my voice. And now I just use it everywhere. <laughs> but uh, Absolutely. That's <laughs> awesome. You have to. And, you know, and there, there's a story that goes uh, to that. But, you know, once I found that voice and, and, uh, and self-esteem and being able to move forward, that's what I try to create in uh, the community. And that's what I uh, try to pass on to uh, children in schools when I go to speak in the schools. Uh, it's pride. And, and, you know, my call to action has always been diversity. Because I just so totally believe that diversity is going to be a prevention or stop uh, to racism. We, because... Once we all learn to go to school together and play together and work together, um, we see each other for people instead of skin color. So that's always been my, my goal. Absolutely. And I agree with you. That's beautiful. Maya, I have a question for you. Um, we talked a little bit about residential schools and um, the impact it's had on Indigenous communities across um, I wouldn't even say Canada, but across the world, um, for those that have been impacted. As a child, you're nine years old and hearing about this, how does that, how does that make you feel or uh, what kind of feelings did you have learning about that? It's mostly sad feeling because my ancestors went and a lot of other kids went and some didn't return home. So learning about it made me feel like good I couldn't agree more. I was devastated. And like I've shared, um, I never learned about these things, even at your age or even being older until I was much older, I started hearing about, um, the impact of residential schools and then the findings this past year. Um, and I empathize that sad sadness with you. Um, it's not easy. Um, and for you to be such an advocate and voice for the Métis culture um, and being nine years old, I would love to know what it's like having a long life friend such as Shirley. And that will be my last question. Um, having a long life friend like Shirley is a really great thing. She's probably been my best friend other than all my other friends. Simple as that. Shirley, you are such a strong impact. That's awesome. And I guess I should ask in reverse, what's it like having a friend like Maya? Oh my God, I could, I'd take me an hour to talk about all of Maya's qualities. Uh, but she's just such a welcoming warm little girl with so many talents like I see her dancing or speaking or acting I see her playing the fiddle you have to see her play the fiddle she's just amazing and yeah and she brings light to people and she brings hope to our culture that we are going to be carrying on she's she's our a really light at any Métis function and where she goes. So yeah, it's great. And she is uh, very thankful to her mother for, for always being there for her and being a strong Métis advocate. Janica definitely is. Amazing. Such a blessing to have such a great friendship and relationship. And uh, honestly, I want to thank you both so much for coming on today um and sharing your experiences your thoughts and the uh, messaging around the importance of metis culture and just that overall family and welcoming feel um maya i hope i can meet you one day i would love to have a jig competition against you <laughs> um you might you'll obviously do a lot better than me but uh and then hearing you play the fig would be amazing to to listen to as well um and shirley thank you so much for answering all the questions and being here with maya um, and thank you to everybody watching. Uh, we really hope you enjoyed the session and we hope you enjoy the rest of day five on uh, Truth and Reconciliation Week.
Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you. You too. Bonjour. Good afternoon. I would like to acknowledge that since I am in Winnipeg today, I am Treaty 1 territory on the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Dakota, Dene, Métis, and Oja Cree peoples. I recognize we all work in different places and we live and gather and organize on various traditional territories. As this is the first Truth and Reconciliation Week, if it comes to an end, there are a few people that we'd like to give our sincerest gratitude for and their involvement in ensuring this week was supported and funded. Truth and Reconciliation Week is a national initiative made possible with support of staff at the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation, the NCTR Governing Circle, the NCTR Survivors Circle, NCTR Steering Committee, and all staff have been integral to building this week. Thank you to our friends at AMP for their producing talents and media styles for communi communication support. Truth and Reconciliation Week was made possible with the generous support of funders, sponsors, and partners from across the country. We give a big thank you to the Government of Canada for their support and thank our presenting sponsor, RBC. This program became a reality with their contributions and those made by the NIB Trust Fund, Hubelo, the Winnipeg Foundation, Canadian Commission for UNESCO, and to the provinces and territories that contributed in a meaningful way, and particularly to the many provincial ministries of education and organizations for their collaboration, understanding, and support. Thank you to our media supporters from APTN, CBC, Facebook, NFB, CBC Manitoba, Tele-Quebec en Class, Wapakoni, No Indigenous History, CBC Kids News. Thank you to our elders, knowledge keepers, speakers, and the survivors who participated in this week's program, as well as the Assembly of First Nations, I give special thank you to Elder Bone and to our drummer, Ray Stevenson, for the opening and opening us in a good way, the Sacred Fire Keepers, and to the Honorable Murray Sinclair, thank you for your presentation as a knowledge keeper and for always sharing your wisdom with us. Lastly, I want to thank Hubelo, the platform on which we were able to share this wonderful week of sessions. Truth and Reconciliation Week content will be available on the Hubelo platform for weeks to come. And we encourage teachers to log in to access content and educational materials as the conversations in your classrooms continue. With this, we come to an end of Truth and Reconciliation Week. Thank you for all being present this week and for joining us as such an attentive audience. To the teachers, students, those committed to lifelong learning, and everyone who participated in this week, Miigwech for your commitment and learning and growing as part of your journey of reconciliation. I hope you have all had a great day and will continue to do so the rest of the week. Thank you. Miigwech.